This conference is a good preparation for the celebration of the Holy Triduum, and then, of course, on the octave day of Easter, Divine Mercy Sunday, our celebration of the heart of God, His mercy, as it unfolds in these saving mysteries. Day of tremendous grace. On that day, the floodgates are open. And again, it's, it's a culmination of God's love and mercy, uh, where our sins and uh, temporal punishment are forgiven. And it's just, again, a, a day the Lord says, hey, come and recognize my love and mercy. And hopefully, you know, I've been trying to do that the other 364 days out of the year, but it is the big feast day. And yet, for me, I know that on the next day, the work continues because so many in the world don't know the name of Jesus Christ, they've never heard of Jesus Christ, and the evangelization continues. You know, I think it's just another great opportunity to be reflective and to be mindful. Um, I don't think we have enough of those times that we, we stop and we think and we pause and we're reflective. Easter obviously is, is one of my favorites, along with Good Friday, you know, that there is suffering and there's redemption and followed by, you know, God's mercy. I don't know if you can think enough of that. I think uh, every Sunday should be that. But, but again, you know, you, you, you have to, um, you know, again, I think it's about being mindful and taking the time and it just makes us more aware, you know, uh, and hopefully more conscious that we can grow in our consciousness that we're not alone and that God's mercy endures forever. It's very important for your children to know that there's a legacy, that there is something more than what is here. And Divine Mercy Sunday is more than Easter eggs and gifts. It's a family day. It's a day of thanks, thanks and acceptance and forgiveness. Well, of course, when, when uh, the celebration of Easter and the celebration of Divine Mercy Sunday, I, 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 it's one of my favorite times of the year. And of course, with meaning for me, especially as, first of all, as a sinner, I rejoice. You know, the, the door for, for mercy is open and it can always be open wider. Uh, and and, and we, we can take all of that that we can get. Uh, but secondly, as a priest, you know, St. Paul says the ministry of reconciliation has been entrusted to us. And I've always said to people as a priest, hearing confessions, is such a tremendous uh, a moment of grace for the priest hearing the confessions because while the repentant is repenting of his or her sins and confessing them, we're listening and we're hearing our sins and we're repenting all over again along with them. So it is not just the priest is giving forgiveness to this penitent, it's that penitent and priest together are celebrating the divine mercy in that sacramental moment. So it's a time when I am renewed in my priesthood as we celebrate this feast each year. And I, and I always think with gratitude to John Paul II, under whom I also worked at the Vatican uh, for a couple of years, and uh, the gift he has given to the church by instituting this as a formal feast. I think it's the, a kind of a capstone or a, a moment to consummate uh, the great uh, Paschal celebration. Uh, we celebrate this wonderful uh, pa Passover of Jesus from death to new life. And then on the eighth day, the octave day, we uh, give thanks to God that uh, this mercy has touched us personally.